Hey everyone, so this is where we're at now. Uh, we're on the Super 67. I got the 311 nodders all on. This is the bracket I was saying we had to cut off. I cut off the other machine. That was a bit of rigmarole. I mangled it up pretty good, so I had to beat it out on an anvil to get it straightened again. But, uh, uh, actually, it went together pretty decent. I mean, you're going to have little glitches, there's no question about it. Uh, I got it. Needles all come right up through. Good. Uh, now, for the big differences, is it, uh, big differences is the 67 now i have no idea why but they didn't have this spacer in there so the 311 that was the difference between the yoke the needles are half an inch apart further so what happened is i had to trim out half an inch and then cut this bracket move this over half an inch so everything had to be moved over half an inch just on this side this side here was, was perfect everything lined up good here uh chain went right on i got time in a little better you can see my time marks are off i gotta put a new shear bolt up there so i gotta i got time in a little better then I got to weld this bracket in. So this one, the original bracket, like I say, everything on this side is off, was off half an inch. So the yoke part with the bear in here, I mean, this stuff is all the same, bolted in the exact same. Uh, where your needle bolted on was out, was was also the half inch out, right? So when it was trying to go up, it was rubbing on the side and then pushing the needle off. So your needle was ending up way over here. So way over in there. Anyhow, uh... You know, you're going to have that stuff, that, that that stuff happens, but it can be done, so it's not like the end of the world, right? As long as you've got the right amount of teeth on your sprocket, everything times up the same, they got to work, right? So, uh, what else did I do here now? Oh, so anyways, my, my needles all come up good. Now, for my stop on my plunger, and I, I don't know how everything was working beforehand, uh, this is your original bushing that went on here. Now I moved the stop ahead because I was I didn't it wasn't going out it was just touching it so the plunger was still going to hit it so when it goes back home position it's about there so then your your stop is out right so basically I need uh, and this mm -hmm. something could be bent here too how would you know but I need to make a bushing or get a bushing about the size of that nut and that'll hit it that hits it fine so it goes out plenty of room for the, the plunger to clear it. Right? So, uh, like I say, you're going to have little things like that anyhow. But Other than that, it's not going to be too, too bad. I won't be able to use this cover because of that shear bolt mechanism here on the inside. So, uh, we're going to do little changes here. I have to take the cover off. It's going to still bolt up fine. Um, I might have to trim it a little bit out here, but I'm not too worried about that. But at least this way, I'm able to run the polytwine. Uh, I'll be able to run the polytwine through it. And I, I believe they're a better nodder than the original ones. I mean, these were old, right? So that's, you're talking 50s technology, right? But, uh, you know, and, and they, these work good too. It's just matter. Basically, the biggest problem was that yoke was no good. It bent. And you can still see the bent. They bent it. It's been bent before, you can tell. Oh, shoot. Lose the bolts. Ah. Yeah, it's, she's been tweaked all before. And this is where they straightened it this time. But even those bend marks, it shouldn't have been in there. It should have been... And, and I'm pretty sure that's how it should have been. But anyhow, we'll put that back on this one. And uh, we still got a little work left to do, but it's coming. You know, I'll throw in a few pictures of uh, when I took everything out and then I cut this out and had to move this over. A few pictures I took of that. But, you know, basically, it's not, it's just something I'm playing around with or waiting for hay weather, anyhow. So I figured, well, it's a good time to get at it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Hey, I don't really need it, but I didn't really have anything in it. And the other baler I bought is junk. You've seen it. It's all rusted out. So, you know, if you can make one out of the two and it's just something, a backup. Or I li I'd like to see it work. I really would. You know, it's kind of a kind of a neat old baler. So, we get it tined up better. i got to find a shear bolt for inside. Just got a screw shoved in there now. I think I got the right bolts I brought from over the house and, uh, and stuff. So. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to weld this bracket on. Uh, I'll get another video there when I get everything all finally bolted down good and stuff. And this is the original hitch that come off that 311. And it bolts right up. Everything bolts right up here the same. The only difference is there should be a hole here. But I don't need the hitch, but it's kind of nice to have it on it. So might as well use it. 
and then when that machine's done, then she just goes scrap. So I got a new tube. I got a I got a new tire for over there. I change all that stuff around. But yeah, we get to uh, pretty pretty happy so far, and we'll be able to try it. Just run some feet, hay through it. Is it greased up good? I just threw the paint on just because it was like ground everything, some stuff down and uh, I didn't want it all rusting to pieces so once I get it all together and get it working then you gotta start keeping it undercover otherwise you're just gonna be fighting with these things all the time right so but uh, my international is working good so this one's just kind of spare and maybe I'll be able to run the two of them at the same time speed things up a little bit but you know ideally something newer would be nice but that's just how it is I'm not I'm Hey everyone, uh, just a little bit of an update where we're at here now on this Super 67. I have the nodders all in place, everything's tying, working good, put new hay dog springs in. Uh, yeah, I mean I haven't run any hay through it yet, but everything's coming up through. Uh, I gotta get somebody, I haven't got a plasma cutter, but I want to cut this cover out. Uh, basically where that bolt is, so that way it will take the end of that so I can still use that cover. Uh, you know, that way you've got chains flopping all around and you chains grabbing somebody so basically everything went in good uh i put that tire and wheel off that 311 uh this one here had a big bulge in it and you know not that that one will last too much longer either but i might get the season out of it but and i guess i had to modify uh this this here plunger dog i had to take 15 16 out and then add it on to the end but everything's working good now just turning over my hand everything's all in time needles coming up good uh, stops are going in good uh, yeah pretty pretty good little project actually uh, let me say I haven't got any money in it so it doesn't really matter but just freaking in time so we got a little weather here I should go mow some hay this morning this is the the, the to, uh, wheel off of the 311 but it wouldn't fit on this this one needs that little narrow dinky tire so that one I, I was going to use originally and then it was rusted bad so I ended up uh, going to get this one put a new just it was a brand new car tire actually on it and uh, it's too it's too big won't fit it so now I got the other one in there Tim's been in there this morning uh, cleaning it up good I'm just gonna throw this old tire and a tube on it uh, yeah always something always something turn that off why? So we got it in here cleaned up. I got a mega uh, small patch on it and drill it so for the valve stem. But we'll be able to use it, save it. So it's just in here. And I'll put a patch on it and then drill it out. But what's holding me up is the drive shaft, the PTO shaft. So yeah. Just how it goes. Now if you look at it, it's crooked as could be. <laughs> they weld this up. Of course, I didn't really look at this too awful much. If you can see it, there's no way that's not that's just a mess. So this is the shaft off the 311. They were the opposites. So this one is off the baler, which I can't use because the bushing's bad in there. So I don't have a bushing, and I really didn't want to mess with it. Hey Timmy, you know buddy. I'm just showing them your wheel in there you're cleaning up doing a good job so what i'm thinking i'm going to do i got to measure it up make sure they're the same the tubing i believe is the same but i'm going to have to cut this tubing off to use this tubing and then weld on that end because they're different the shaft's different and then weld it on here it's just a bunch of work that i really don't need to do but i haven't got much choice i need a shaft for it so yeah and I'm not even going to try messing with trying to straighten that mess. I could put it in the press and try it, but it's not really worth my my time and bullshit doing it. Right? So, hey, yeah, that's where we're at with it. Uh, yeah, like I say, just stupid little things now. Try to get things ready on it, but we get I grease it up, oil the chains up. Okay, I haven't hooked it to a tractor yet because I got to get the shaft rigged up. But that'll be the the trying test is uh, has been used in a long time so getting some hay through it and get it tying and uh you know go from there once you get it working good and put it in undercover 
that's the life of these things if they're undercover. So, yeah. But uh, so far, I'm pretty pretty pleased with it. I have the acre counter. I'm going to. I took it off the other baler, and I got to cut the little tab off it and put it here because it went here. This one ran inside here, and that's all busted to pieces. So I'm going to uh, put it here back uh, and then you're able to see it it does work on it so oh and that's the other thing uh this one here for your tension on your bales is a different design than 311 this cranks down this is similar to my international uh i'm gonna i really shouldn't because this one's really nice shape inside the other one's quite rusty but uh i like the design of the 311 a little better with the big heavy springs on the outside and uh I don't know. In my way of thinking, I guess it kind of seems to be a little bit better. It might might make more uniform board, uh, bales. You know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. But uh, anyhow, I took that one out. I got to take the zip wheel up and cut one bolt off so I can slide the bottom piece out because the springs are still on it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. First thing I do is try it. If I don't like it, I'll take it out and put this back to this one. But I think it's a little nicer design. And I see all the newer ones you know, we're all that way. The springs on the outside down in here. So it kind of pulls the springs apart, right? Yeah. Hi, Anyhow. Everybody. What's Timmy doing? Brianna. Here's Brianna. Oh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Just uh, working away at it, so. Brianna. We'll talk at you later.